yeah, there's a lot of people running around. You know, and I've, I've actually been at these type of events, and they market, you know, not for the kids, kids go here, whatever. But on occasion, some kid sneaks in the wrong cooler, and there's people, you know, they're not exactly watching. So they go off behind the barn, and, you know, they're messing around with alcohol. Nobody intended for it to happen, certainly not the person that had the gathering. But again, the wrong person sees it. They call up and say, hey, I was at this gathering. I, you know, I don't want to be the one, but, you know, we got, I know we got this ordinance. We got this law. And Junior over there, he, him and his buddies were sipping on the alcohol. Didn't say anything to the owner, maybe. So you got a situation sometimes where things that aren't supposed to happen, happen. You know, one of my concerns with this is, you know, I don't know if you get teenagers, but I do. And they're not, they're not stupid. They're smart. Everybody's talking about this problem of teen drinking. This does nothing to stop teen drinking. It just pushes the teens further into the woods. They're gonna, if they have doubts of whether this adult, where they thought maybe they had a safe area to drink, they're going to go further into the woods where nobody knows about it. I think that creates a bigger danger for teens. Some supervision is better than no supervision. So just that thought, um, give it a little uh, consideration that there might be some negative uh, impacts and uh, we, you know, as a parent I think it's my responsibility to teach my kids about what's appropriate and not and I don't want somebody else getting penalized for something that I didn't do personally. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else to speak for or against? Yes. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Commissioners. Uh, my note card. There you go. There you go. Um, my name is Gary Sperl, 17027 133rd Street, Little Falls. Uh, been a member of the community since 1980. My wife and I raised three children. They're they're growing up, and uh, you know I've read about read what was happening. Been been informed, heard the heard the negatives, realized the pressure U.S. commissioners get on phone calls, pro and for and against. You know, and and I am as big. You know, I've read you know, some of the responses and what happens. I'm probably as big of a constitutional conservative and anti-big government person as that is in this room. I mean, so I understand the thing about not more laws and government infringement, but um, I don't think this is all about the ordinance. I think this is about leadership. And I think that's the thing you have before you today. Um, and this is why. For 35 years, I've been a pharmacist here in town. Um, I've been involved with law enforcement from the get-go, pretty much on drug, drug abuse pre prevention, methamphetamine manufacture, etc. In the last five years, I've been on the Morrison County Task Force since that's been implemented, trying to cut down on prescription drug use and sale and all the things that go along with it. My experience, and I think, is borne out by the faces uh, and the people and the proof uh, through the arrests that have happened. There's a link. There's a link between underage drinking and what happens and the chaos and the havoc that it causes in these families in our county. I can tell you firsthand, I'm in the trenches and I get to see the backside of it. So as a result, I think the, uh, I mean the onus is obviously on, on you, but I think, I think the biggest thing this ordinance can do is it can give parents an out. They need an out for when, when their kids are um, into these situations, they can be the heavy and not put all the pressure on. I know kids need to grow up, and I know some of them will still drink, but uh, I'm just going to urge you to lead, and I believe your constituents will follow. I'm in favor of this ordinance, and I address any questions you may have. Does the board have any questions? Thank you, Gary. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Is there anyone else in the audience to speak for or against? Is there anyone else to speak for or against? I'm going to ask a third and final time. If I don't hear anything or nobody else wants to come up, I will close the hearing for the third time. Is there anyone else that would care to speak for or against? Having heard no one else requesting to speak for or against, we will close the public hearing part of this, of this uh, interaction.
Mr. Chair, I have a comment from Katie Ritters at 13033 Arden Boulevard, Plaza, Minnesota. As a parent of a 14 and 16 year old professional, a 16 year old and a professional who works with high school students, I wish to express my support of the social host ordinance for Morrison County. Studies have proven a human brain is not fully developed until age 25. Drinking alcohol has been shown to have a negative effect on this development. Because of this, my husband and I do not allow our teenage children to drink alcohol at our home or elsewhere. Others should not have the right to make this decision for me while my teens are at their home or on their property. Having a social host ordinance would discourage others from posting or allowing underage drinking to occur. The good news is 9 out of 10 <coughs> parents in our community agree. Laws enforcement should strongly enforce laws regulating alcohol use by youth under 21 and 88% of members agree, community members agree. Having a social host ordinance similar to 25 other counties in Minnesota will help the many youth who don't drink feel supported in their choice not to. Thank you for your consideration in supporting our youth and continuing to make healthy, positive choices. Mr. Chair, I have a comment from Annette Schmea and Pierce. Dear Morrison County Commissioners, I am writing in support of Morrison County adopting the social host ordinance. I have heard that the commissioners have been receiving phone calls opposing the ordinance, and I just shake my head and have to wonder why anyone would oppose this unless they themselves have no problem allowing minors to post a on their property. I am a parent of three teens and one 21-year-old, and I fully support the social host <coughs> ordinance. If a parent wants to allow their own child to consume alcohol in their own home, then that's their business, and I'm fine with that. What I don't want, and am not in favor of, is some other parent deciding that it's okay to allow my child to consume alcohol. That's happening all over the place in Morrison County. Parents making decisions for other parents, and I don't like it. Turning a blind eye is just as bad as providing the alcohol for the child in the first place. The only ones I can understand have a, having a problem with this ordinance are the ones who think it's okay for minors to drink, or they are the ones that are indeed providing the alcohol in the first place to be the cool parent. Either way, it's wrong and illegal, or should be. Thank you for your time. Okay. Mr. Chair, those are all the um, written comments that I have. Okay. Uh, commissioners, discussion, concerns, questions that you would have for our county attorney or whoever related to any of the facts that were stated here regarding concerns or questions about uh, how work can be housed or what happens in certain search situations, uh, I would encourage you to. Mr. Chair, I have one of many questions and probably won't get many answers to the I but the one under the exceptions, and I've read this whole thing probably ten times, in this ordinance says, this ordinance does not apply to situations, again, subdivision five, exceptions, number uh, letter D, 
It says this ordinance does not apply to situations where an underage person are lawfully in possession of alcohol. If it's illegal to have a minor have alcohol, why is it lawfully in possession of alcohol? It just doesn't make any sense to me. It's just like we're defeating what we're in this, and I'm going to put this at Brian, and I, I apologize, but I'd like to kind of an explanation on this one. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, I think that relates to uh, a situation where uh, people under 21 are employed in uh, bars or restaurants, and they're serving alcohol to, to guests. And that carves out an exception, so they wouldn't be in violation of this ordinance if they're working and serving within the scope of their employment at bars and restaurants. Because at 18, you can open a bar and restaurant, so no, 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 no. Exactly. Okay, so. And Mr. Chair, yes. that's state sure. law. Yes. Any other questions about the board for our county attorney? Brian, what is the penalty for uh, the drinking now? Uh, underage drinking is a, is a misdemeanor. And so the maximum penalty is up to 90 days in jail for one thousand dollar fine. Although uh, for first time offender, uh, it is a payable citation. Current fine set by the uh, chief judges of the state of Minnesota, so it's consistent throughout the state, is about a one hundred sixty one hundred sixty five dollar uh, payable. And Mr. Chair, I have another question here. Uh, and again, I'm, I wrote this down so it says in this ordinance, will this change the landowner? Okay, will this ordinance change for a landowner slash farmer, first time offender, somebody who's 21 years or older that hosts a party where alcohol is knowingly being served? Tough question. So again, what I'm saying is, is there anything in this ordinance right now that is going to add to what we currently have on the books. Yes, I, I, well, I think that's the intended pur purpose of the ordinance is to supplement current state laws by uh, someone liable if they're hosting a party where they know that alcohol is being provided and then take no action. So again, uh, Mr. Chair, yes. if uh, this person is 21 years old, serves a minor, whether it's over a bar or buys uh, a minor uh, alcohol, is there something on the books right now that they can be charged? Uh, this ordinance is intended to supplement current state law, which we can't change. The current state law does make it a crime to furnish alcohol to minors. Uh, this uh, proposed ordinance does go beyond that by filling a gap in the law, by making it also a crime to providing a place for alcohol to be consumed by minors. What's the fine, Mr. Uh, Brian? What's the fine for now if I serve an alcohol uh, to a minor? For furnishing? Time, furnishing alcohol to a minor. What's the first time charge for that? That, uh, there is no specific fine amount. Yeah. It's, it's a mandatory court appearance, and then the judge decides the penalty based upon the seriousness and the facts of each particular case. Thank you. Other questions to the board? Mr. Chair, yes, Mike. Probably Brian. It's the proving part that I'm having problems with. You know, how do you know who's really responsible when there's a party on a premises? Um, my understanding is, in the law, you have to be able to prove it, who it is, in order to charge somebody. But in this law here, you have to prove it to. So if you can prove it then why can't you charge them on the other law? That's a good question. Uh, under under the furnishing law, you have to actually acquire the alcohol and then provide it to the minors. And sometimes it's very difficult for law enforcement to prove who actually did that. Because no one admits it. And no one wants to point the finger at the provider. Uh, so this uh, proposed ordinance does uh, fill a gap in the law by also allowing law enforcement to look at who's actually providing the venue for uh, the crime to occur. 
and that's not always difficult, for, or that's not always easy to prove either. You still have to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. But in some cases, that can be accomplished easier, easier than proving who furnished the alcohol. Oftentimes, it's the same person, though. Other questions of the board? Mr. Chair, yeah, uh, again, you know, I looked at this ordinance, and, and believe me, I put a lot of thought in this over the last two or three weeks of the people that are for it, the people that are against it. Um, I, I, I think maybe, maybe I'm looking at it personally that we're moving at this at the wrong. It's 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 the wrong way to look at this ordinance. Uh, drugs are always brought up, and again, alcohol drugs relate to one another. The penalty that we're, we're, we're going after minors, and believe me, I appreciate these minors, or the younger generation coming in here and speaking out towards uh, uh, being against or for this ordinance. But I, I think we're looking at it from the wrong point of view. I would rather see it, let's go after the suppliers. And again, correct me if I'm wrong. If you have drug uh, drugs on the street, you know, you, you have slapped the hands of people that are using it. But how about the supplier? These uh, uh, adults, 20 years old, they're getting an alcohol from someplace. I got a nice article the other day from uh, uh, Ann, and it showed all the percentages, and that, you know, that alcohol consumption and the rest are all down. But again, I personally would rather go after these suppliers. It's in this ordinance. Let's, let's look at it from that standpoint, where you know, I don't know what the penalty is, but anybody would have to have their head in the sand is that we all know that drinking is not good. But I, I think we, we should look at it from say, hey, let's get these suppliers that are, you know, if it's a parent, if it's a, a, a bar owner, these, these parties are being supplied by someone. And again, I know Mr. Mindor stated that we, you know, again, it's up to the judge and that sort too. But if they know, I mean, we got, uh, uh, <coughs> Mothers against drunk driving. We got students against drunk driving. They, they, the education, and I believe Mr. Jelinski goes and speaks to them, and correct me if I'm wrong, about alcohol too, or crashes, what this thing to do to the young students. I, I think we should go after the suppliers and make them make the penalty a lot larger and say, hey, you know what, you know, let's, let's set the, you know, us up to the judge. Hey, it's a $3,000 fine, cut and drive. I think that will start limiting. And, and again, it was also brought up many times to me, let's hold the minors responsible. These kids are smart, very, very smart. They know how to get the alcohol, but if they know that the fine, you know what, it's a $170 fine. A lot of these young generations, and again, you talk to them now as, you know, teenagers that we used to, oh, they kind of laugh it off. Yeah, I got a minor and that sort. You know, you slap them with a fine to a $1,000 fine, cut and dry. Now they're going to start thinking about those things. And, and again, that, that's where I think we should move this ordinance, in my opinion. Mr. Chair, yes, to elaborate on Randy's a little bit, I do think we have to go back to the kids. You know, in school, if the kids get caught drinking, they can't be playing on sports. And I think sports is very important to kids. And I think that keeps them away from drinking somewhat. Um, I also feel that you know, there's not enough penalty for kids not to be there. You know, when a child walks in to a bar and asks for a drink, I, I don't understand why the bartender is responsible when the person should have never been there to ask because they know it's illegal. <coughs> you know, I was in support of making things tougher on that end of things because, you know, maybe they should lose their driver's license for 30 days. Or I would say cell phone because that's getting pretty close to that. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, something that really hurts them because the fines don't seem to be the issue. You know, they, they just pay them, they move on. And uh, so I, I have a real hard time when it's always somebody else's fault. This ordinance does not pertain to cities. It's only the county at the moment. You know, each city has to do their own thing on this. So we're dealing with the people that are out in the country. Um, so I, I, I'm very supportive of things that punish the people that are doing the crime. I guess that's where I'm coming from, so. Other comments yeah. on the board? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. I feel the same way as Commissioner Wincher and 
Uh, Commissioner Wilson. Let's go ahead and say it. Any other comments from the board? Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Wilson. Comment? Yes. I, like all of you, have received several phone calls from several different people about this whole ordeal. I, like all of you, have been at the public hearing. I, like some of you, attend regularly our Stand Up For You Coalition meeting. I've heard everyone, every single person that has spoke for or against state unequivocally, I'm against underage drinking and drugs. I've heard the concerns both at this board level, both the telephone and the community, very limited concern versus the positive concerns. I will certainly agree that this is not a cure for underage drinking, and it's not meant to be. I believe it's yet another opportunity to slow down underage drinking. It's a tool for law enforcement. We listen to our sheriff. We listen to a drug investigator. Heard from a county attorney, and in fact, it is another tool in that toolbox. <coughs> I believe that same tool has come with the support of our, our elected sheriff and our elected county attorney. I believe our very own public health supports the social host ordinance. This board supports our, your public health, both the staff and the grant funding that supports and keeps programs like this on the docket and provides continuing education directed towards our youth in the same county that they call home. Same county that I call home. And all that being said, I too will support the services. With that being said, Mr. Chair, I don't know if it's t the time or the place, but I would make that motion. And I'm not uh, through with my discussion as yet, but I will do that. Do I have a second? I have a motion. I'll second it. I have a second on the floor for this time. <laughs> I have a motion and a second to support the Hose County Ordinance as, as written. I would be remiss to not mention all of the things I've heard. And, and actually, I got one call from people, someone who's against it. I've received several. In fact, our former county commissioner, Tom Wenzel, said that, uh, called me just last week and I spoke with him and he asked me to relay this to this board and to the public that there was a time when he made a vote that didn't approve this or wasn't in support of it, okay? He said things have changed from his perspective and he called me to tell me that he is very much in support of this social host ordinance. Uh, I was hoping he would be here today, but he's been sick, so he probably was unable to come. Um, that being said, you know, I've listened to the people and been involved in this community with drug and alcohol prevention as a counselor for so many years, as a nurse in the emergency room before that for a couple of years, seeing the, the ramifications of alcohol and drug use. Um, I see all the people who have come before this board and, and, and people in professional status who work with our youth and I just really am having a hard time understanding why people think this is an infringement of their rights because this is not about the 30 and 40 and 50 year old somethings. This is the 21 and 22 and 23 year olds who are having parties and entertaining parties with young people who are underage at those parties. Um, that's what this is about, and, and this is not about penalizing people or providing more fines or heavier fines from my perspective. This is clearly about setting an example for our youth that we as adults in society support them in their knowing that and supporting young parents as well so that they can tell their children that no, we can't do this when indeed they don't have the support to do it with families and relationships. Um, this is about supporting youth, and I, I could, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that. I worked as a chemical dependency counselor now for over 30 years. I developed and ran an adolescent program at Northern Pines in which I worked with, with adolescents. And the interesting thing about that is about 70 to 80% of my work was working with the adults 
who are the parents for those adolescents and their issues. Uh, if, if those kids would have had good supportive role models in society and community, they wouldn't have been in that program and wouldn't have been abusing drugs or alcohol from my perspective. So I am clearly in support of this. I believe we would be remiss if we don't support this. Uh, we have our mayor here, we have our, 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 our sheriff, we have our county attorney, we have so many people from our community, school teachers, uh, our, our public health. I mean, there's so many people in entity supporting this ordinance. Um, it's not about punishing people. Please get away from that idea. It's about letting our children know that it's not okay for adults to provide them with alcohol in their residence. So that's where I'm at with it. So that being said, uh, I have a motion and a second on the floor. No discussion. No discussion. Mr. Chair, I just want you to know that I support the coalition and everything they do. I, I don't drink. I've never drank. We think I can support this very easily. When I became a county commissioner, there were a lot of people that elected me and my constituents by far have, I understand that they are not in favor of this. You know, and where I live, and my constituents are not in favor of this. So now I'm torn between doing what they asked me to do, what they elected me to, or to do what another group wants me to do according to that. So I just want you to understand that this is not easy, and I've got both sides that I'm playing here. Uh, my constituents are still who I hope I represent, and I need to do what they want me to do within reason. You know, and I feel that our laws are already 98% covered on this issue. Um, so that's enough. Other comments? I'm with that, Mr. Chair, I've had the same thing. I've had a lot of, lot of phone calls, and I've had half a dozen for, and the majority of them against, which were a lot of them. And, you know, and I support public health, and I just, uh, I'm with Commissioner Wilson, and, you know, and believe me, I'm not for, I'm not for underage drinking, believe me, I'm not, so, that's all I want to say. And Mr. Chair, and again, me, from the perspective of looking out there, looking in, I'd say, well, you know, where are these people that are all opposed to it? And me, personally, and I've got a lot of phone calls. I had uh, three Monday morning, two Monday afternoon, three were against, two were for. Uh, but the thing is, I think these people, it's not that they're against drunk, they're drinking. Uh, they, they're more against, and uh, two of the three are for penalty. You state that this is not about fines and all that. Well, I think it is because that's why we want to put this in here so we can go after that person that's uh, supplying the liquor or whatever. So that, again, that's my opinion. But I think these people are more or less don't want to come out in front of public because of the fact that, you know, Dad, we, we must be for drinking wine, minors drinking that sort. And that, that's not their or my concern either. And again, I and the majority of people in my district too, uh, they're they're against it. And it has not, you know, I people tell me, oh, the laws, too many laws and all that. I don't look at that. I look at what. We can do as far as the police force, as far as uh, our county attorneys go, is what we can, you know, scare these minors or anybody that is even uh, going to supply these people. That hey, this is a big fine. The DWI's laws, I think that really reduced. I am definitely scared to drink and drive now. Why? Because if I get a ticket, boy, my life is darn well. And these kids know that too. And I believe that was a big thing as far as penalizing people for not drinking. I mean, for drinking and driving, that's absolutely a no-no. And anybody who does that, it's at their own risk. And I say, I, I, I support, you know, most of this in here. But I, again, I would like to see something different in here about, hey, let's go after the suppliers and let's maybe get the miners more uh, uh, penalty too. And that's all I have to say on this. Commissioner Zelensky, anything else? You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> Mr. Chair, yes. I don't know that I really have anything else other than that. Pro or against? Yes or no? Good or bad? I would certainly like to thank each and every person that has been here, not necessarily today, not necessarily last night, but both. I'd like to thank everyone who has given this county a written correspondence and a telephone company correspondence to, to each one of us. Each one of us were elected. We all know that. 
and each one of us knew that there was going to be a time and a place where there, we were going to make an, un, an unpopular decision or a popular decision. And this might be one of those situations, I don't know. But it's one of those situations where we, in fact, were elected and, and we get to make that decision. And that being said, said gentlemen, I just have a little bit of talking to do yet. Okay, I'm not done. Not. You know what? Uh, kind of surprised I am. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Anyways, uh, last year you couldn't talk as much. You were board chair. But anyways, I just need to say that, you know, we have a lot of people come in and talk, and a lot of young people who are here today, and a lot of young people who came before this board at the public hearing a little while back. And, and you know, some of them were very nervous, and, and yet they came up and spoke in front of a board that probably is pretty pretty, I don't know, whatever, major to them, intimidating, you know? And, you know, my, my real concern is, is I look at, and my concern is, when is the silent majority going to stop ruling? And, and, and I hear that. And, you know, I really believe that anyone who is for or against their coming here to speak with us would have been a big deal, okay? I wish that all those people who had called you guys would have come in to this hearing and really put it out there that they're the ones sharing this and really are, are fighting against it. You know, we have a number of people on the board or here in this room who have concerns and issues about about how they feel strongly about certain issues and they're here. So that would be my concern. So anyways, um, that being said, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, further discussion, gentlemen? Having heard none, I would like to uh, ask Commissioner Johnson, opposed or for? I'm, I'm opposed. Opposed. Commissioner Zelensky? I'm for. Commissioner Wincher? Opposed. And I'm for. Motion fails. Thank you all for coming.
for Destruction-Free Driving Day in Morrison County. A proclamation by the Pierce High School Epic Group, Morrison County Sheriff's Department, and Morrison County Safe Roads Collision. Whereas the safety and security of citizens of Morrison County and surrounding areas are vitally important, and whereas a National Highway Traffic Safety Administration study found that 71% of, of teens and young adults send text messages while driving, and 98% read messages while behind the wheel. Another NHTSA study found that 90% of passengers feel unsafe in the car when the driver texts. However, 50% of the same group while texts while driving, and 
Whereas teens who witness their parents engage in distracted driving behavior more frequently demonstrate the same behaviors when they're driving. Whereas the probability of a crash due to texting and driving is 43 times more likely than a crash in which the driver has a 0.08% blood alcohol content. Texting while driving diverts attention from, from the road for about 4.6 seconds. The equivalent of driving blindfolded across an entire football field at 55 miles per hour. And whereas drivers, while using a cell phone, reduces the amount of brain activity associated with driving by 37% and reaction time by 18%. Whereas law enforcement agencies statewide will be actively participating in the distractive driving enforcement mobilization during the month of April to reduce the risk of injury and death caused in traffic crashes related to distracted or inattentive driving and Whereas the Peers Epic Group, Morrison County Sheriff's Department, Morrison County Safe Roads Coalition support efforts that help raise awareness of the dangers of distracted driving, particularly amongst teenagers, in order to both reduce the number of distracted driving crashes and to better educate drivers and... Whereas in order to reduce the number of crashes as well as improve driver safety, Morrison County motorists should dedicate themselves to adopting and maintaining safe behavior while behind the wheel. Now therefore, be it resolved that we, the Board of the Morrison County Commissioners of the great state of Minnesota, do hereby proclaim April 30, 2015, <coughs> Distraction Free Driving Day in Morrison County. We call this observance to the attention of all our citizens. I have a so move on that, Mr. Chair. All right. Second. Motion and a second <coughs> to support the Distraction Free Driving Day. Further discussion, gentlemen? Mr. Chair, I support this 100% because when you're on the road and I say, I think pretty much most people are guilty of being on the dark cell phones. And I, I think it's almost worse than uh, someone drinking and driving. And I've seen young people, old people, all over the road. It's like, cheapers. Am I guilty of it occasionally? Maybe. <laughs> thank, thank you for all you do. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I too, I support this, and I think there's not enough penalties in place for this. I think this is one big area that we've been going that we can do a lot of work on because it's bad for everybody, and this isn't a kid thing. This is everybody with cell phones, you know. I mean, we've got to get used to not answering them as guilty as anybody, you know. Um, this is an area that that I think that we can do a lot of work on and trying to prevent accidents and stuff because I would say just about everybody with a cell phone is guilty on this, on this. so I do support things like that. Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Jones. I need to go back in that, I think it's a deal. 4.5 seconds? Are you the 4.5 second football fan? That is Tom. 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 <laughs> Blindfolded across a football field at 55 miles an hour for 4.6 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, let's think of that one for one second. Bad news. Put your cell phone in your trunk. You don't need it. Thank you. Members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, here about two months ago, I bought a Toyota Prius, okay? And I've been walking one for years, and I'm going in the final road on 40th Avenue, and I'm doing about 20 miles an hour, and happy a little slippery that night. We got that last snowfall there, and I looked over at that screen that shows when the electric's working and when the, the gas engine is working. I looked over at that screen, and I'm down in the ditch. It's like, it's like because I didn't go far, but once I hit my brakes, I, I, I was very lucky. But it's just that quick. So something new in the car, and I looked over it for a second, it's like, oh, shoot. So I was very lucky I didn't crash right my new car. So, anyways, that's what we're <laughs> I was distracted. So, anyways, thank you for, for coming here today, and, and I do uh, appreciate that. So, having heard the motion a second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, all. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Yes, a photo? We get a photo. You wouldn't be <laughs> Sheila Suck, would you? Yeah. You would be yeah. A little more enthusiastic? No? Oh, <laughs> 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 Get a picture. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
2015, whereas mental illnesses are medical conditions that disturb a person's thinking, feeling, mobile ability to relate to others, and daily functioning. Just as diabetes is a disorder of the pancreas, mental illnesses are medical conditions that often result in a dismissed capability, capacity for coping with the ordinary demands of life and Whereas mental illnesses can affect persons of any age, race, religion, or income. Mental illnesses are not the result of personal weakness, lack of character, or poor upbringing. And, whereas without treatment, the consequences of mental illnesses for the individual and society are staggering. <coughs> Unemployment, substance abuse, homelessness, inappropriate incarnation, or suicide, and... Whereas stigma corrodes confidence that mental disorders are real, treatable health conditions. We have allowed stigma and a now unwarranted sense of hopelessness to erect attitudinal, structural, and financial barriers to effective treatment and recovery. And whereas early identification and treatment is of vital importance by ensuring access to the treatment and recovery supports that are proven effective, recovery is accelerated, and the further harm related to the course of illness is minimized, and whereas mental, illness, mental illnesses are treatable with appropriate <coughs> effective medication and a wide range of services tailored to their needs, most people who live with serious mental illnesses can significantly reduce the impact of their illness and find a satisfying measure of achieving achievement and independence. Now. Therefore, we, the commissioners of Morrison County, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2015 to be Mental Health Awareness Month in Morrison County and urge all citizens to work together to break the stigma of mental illness and provide our support to those suffering and recovering from mental illnesses. I have a request to proclaim Mental Health Awareness Month in May. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Further discussion, gentlemen? Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Jones. I think that it is so important to have people like you. And equally as important to have people like you that are not here. That support the job functions that you have. Which should be each and every one of us. Because quite honestly, 
mental health is not something that I got from drinking a cup of coffee. Certainly not suggesting it's because they drink a, uh, a beer or a jug of booze. Mental health is something that happens, and I very much appreciate each and every one of you and what you do because of the disease. I'm not sure if the disease is the right word. But it is a disease, disease, yes. Because, it is. because of the disease that, quite honestly, I don't know that we have a whole lot of control for, but, but it takes your support. And I tr truly mean this. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Other members Thank, of the board? Yeah. Thank you for all your support. Commissioner, <laughs> sure, this uh, mental disease. It, it, it's to me, it's a real hard diagnostic or diagnosis. As far as what you guys do for you know treatments and everything like that, I watched the news the other day about this young man that was uh, basically charging this policeman, and he knew he was uh, mentally ill. You know, and, uh, everything everything was what right. They got the guy, but it's like, hey, you know, this is what you guys do to you know, try to prevent that or any tragedy that may be out there. Yes, I commend. You. Other comments from the board? That all being said, I haven't worked in a profession I haven't at the psych unit in the state hospital in Brainerd as a nurse back in the early 80s when there was a lot of neat stuff out there like uh, like PCB and some stuff that really messed people up. So I'm very aware of this and I thank you because without that support group and that support system in place for people with mental health issues, it would be very difficult. So you really, you're, you, what you do and the work you do keeps a lot of people out of permanent placements and, and really allows them to continue to live and survive in the community. So thank you for all you do. That being said, uh, gentlemen, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Robin. How are you? Oh. Hi, Robin. Hey, how are you? I'm good at you. Pretty good. The chair's all good. Yep. Oh, I think the way you should stand here. We'll put a sign out there. Miss Carla, you're hiding. It isn't. Okay, there we go. There we go. Paul, step in just a bit. There you go. Paul, let's get in there. Ready? All right, one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Taking the picture, please. I'll be saying to uh, yes. her to her to the pro. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you, Jim. Welcome, Sheriff. Morning. Morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Morning, Sheriff. Good morning. Yeah. You know, I just have the March 2015 monthly report. Be fairly brief. Um, See what order they put in. So all I'm going to do is every month I'll just take different uh, departments within our agency and okay. let you see our smiling faces. How's that sound? Appreciate that. Um, if you want to go up one more, please. Oh, like to the picture again? Go to the grab. Oh. I'll just start there. Okay. So as I read this through, the number of complaints <coughs> received for the month of March was 718. Um, criminal complaints, we had 85 with 64 of those cases cleared. Non-criminal complaints, we had 633. So we'll look at the graph. 85 of those criminal complaints, the biggest percentage there is 25% in your pie graph, which would be the top right. Um, we had 21 thefts, which was that 25%, if that makes any sense. So I kind of looked into it to see, okay, what was some of those thefts? Um, we had 10 gas drive-offs in that category. We had four thefts from buildings, and as I broke it down and looked into it, all those buildings were unsecured, they were not locked. Um, one credit card theft, one theft from vehicle, two thefts from yards, one theft from a person, and two worthless checks. And uh, the rest, I believe, I do have attached numbers if you want to look at that if you have questions at some point. And then the bottom of the graph is 107 traffic citations. 
Again, it's no secret, we do a lot of uh, traffic enforcement, but we do give a lot of verbal warnings. So you'll see 73% of that category, which uh, accumulates to 78 through verbal warnings. We had 78 verbal warnings, and citations issued for speed was 13. Question, Sean, with yep. that being said. So you do, you have 73, or 78 was it, verbal warnings, 73? 78. 70 verbal warnings, where you did not give citations. Correct. Okay. Those 70, you track those, so if you pick someone up or pull them over the next month or within a certain time frame, that then you will charge them? Yes, we do. Okay. That's so a good question. I'll use uh, our county administrator, Deb Gruber. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 no, it's purely hypothetical. If, if Deb gets pulled over, her information is entered into our RMS system, which is records management system, and there'll be a track record as to what was issued, whether it's a verbal warning or a citation for speed. So the second time we deal with her and or third time, we know there's an issue. So if she's been getting warnings that first time or second time, now it's probably time for a citation. So how many, does that happen frequently or not? No, Mr. Cherry, don't speak. I'm not asking, yeah. <laughs> I'm asking a general question. Now we came back to it, it's, it's officer discretion, but of course, it's we look at the totality of the circumstances. Are we pulling somebody over and they're, they're, they're going 80 miles an hour in a 55? Well, more than likely, they're going to get ticket. If, if it's something where you know it's, it's just a few miles an hour over, then more than likely she has a clean record. We're probably just going to give her a warning. So it's officer discretion. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chair, sure. if I may comment on yes. this too, is the naysayers always think that the police department have quotas, you know, they get tickets and all that. I think this uh, puts uh, that to rest that it's not. It sheds a little light each month yeah. I've been coming to you guys, and you're seeing that we give out a lot of verbal warnings. Yeah. And, but you know, that's how we get drugs off the street too. We have to do. You know, we try and make multiple stops, doing our job enforcing the laws, but we try and take things a step further, and uh, that's why we've got to make these stops as well. This report doesn't give you a license to speed the way. Correct. Yes, Mr. Zelensky. Mr. Chair, if we can stick with the, the example. We know that Ms. Rubert does a lot of traveling within the state, <laughs> certainly on county business, and is in the cities from time to time. Ms. Gruber was to be stopped in the cities for doing 85 and a 55, let's just say. Would this be, what would law enforcement have access to that information? That's a great, for the records. It's a great question, Commissioner. And what it is, is if other agencies have the same system <coughs> that we have, we have LETG. If other agencies have LETG in the same RMS system, then it would show, it would be transparent. But as it stands right now, not all 87 counties have LED. How many counties. will we have? How many have what we have? I can't answer that. Okay. But I can tell you, you that there are some surrounding counties that do have it. Okay. So within this area and region, yes, we're kind of all on the same page. Okay. And LETD, LETG is making a big push, and they're expanding. But that would be the ultimate goal, to have all law enforcement on the same page. Thank so we can right. track something like that. I'll move on. Civil process. Uh, we received 81 papers uh, that need to be served, and we received $1,900. Um, as far as our drug investigations, we had one controlled substance search warrant, we had two controlled substance agency assists, uh, three possession of marijuana and drug paraphernalia, and that is it. Um, total inmates, our high for the month was 45. Um, Morrison County inmates, we have what, 146, that's for the entire month. 1281 if you accumulate all that together. Um, held for other counties, you'll see that we have 11 inmates that were held for other counties and all 11 are from Beltran. So we're housing them, getting a little extra revenue, so that's great. And the pay to stay, I'll just jump down to the bottom. You know, Mount Bill was. Yes, Chair. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, Chair. This uh, help for other counties, is that something that you go after? I want to think we discuss that as far as do you solicit other counties? Do they, we got room for you? Do you have snow? Do you well, what we find out is we, we try. Scott McKissick just got promoted to the job administrator position. And we went over expectations, and one of the things were. Let's reach out and see what other counties would actually, um, yeah, would, would utilize us. And, and Beltrami was one of them. So if we can make money 
of housing their inmates. It was kind of a no-brainer. Let's get some extra revenue and let's run with it. So that's what we've been doing. And not to say, hopefully we'll get some other counties in the future, but Bill Tramie has been, been good with us and, and we've been taking advantage of it. So, you know, that's about it. You guys have the rest of the stats there. If you have any questions. Any questions, gentlemen? Yes, we sure. Yes, Mr. Yes, Jelinski. Question on the jail. Yes. Bill Tramie County, as, an, as the example is. Yep. We're not getting rich off but we are making a profit. Correct. Okay. What we look at is whether or not the other agency is going to transport their yep. prisoners to us. Because if they're not, now we have to take in account our own expense for gas and, yep. and, and wage, exactly. wage time. But th these uh, prisoners are being transported to us, so we are making, you know, I don't want to give you a direct quote, but it's right around that $55 a day. Very good. That's, a, that's Very good. Very good. Mr. Chair, yeah, one question yeah. for Sean. Uh, some years ago, we got a lot from Intel. All these counties built their own jails. We used to get a lot from I think St. Louis County, up by Duluth. We used to get a lot there. But wherever they go, and everybody, you know, in the last ten years, there's been a lot of jails built. We're going to stay active and, and uh, hopefully continue to get our revenue coming. Yep. And Sean, just one other thing I wanted to mention: uh, the ST, STS crew went out to the airport and did a lot of really good work, and actually. Uh, Tom Olson out there said that I've been telling the crew came out and, and cut all those trees that are in our Crossland runway that are we're closing up <coughs> on the airport commission and, and the work they did and, and the thousands of dollars that would cost the airport. I, I'm talking to bring in a tree company. I mean, they cut all those trees. They threw them over the fence out of the airport, out of the highway right away. I mean, they did a lot of really good work. So I just hear so much good things about them. So I do too. I get a thank you card at least once a week. So I'll make sure to pass that on. Yeah, to that, that, yeah. So good, good stuff. Right. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, planning and zoning report. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have a couple of items for you today. The first one is to give you an update on the scenic view. Uh, conditional use permit request, as you recall, this was a resort expansion that um, you had considered uh, last board meeting and uh, we continued it to really um, ask for more information. And so, um, if you recall, the, the Department of Natural Resources had um, determined that the, the docking area is not a marina, and so we had a little work to do in measuring docks and all of that. And then we also wanted to allow a little bit more time for official correspondence from the uh, from Scandi Valley Township. And so I'm here to update you on a few of those things, really just have some discussion. I'm not sure if the township is here or not. I know the applicants are here. And, and the members of the board of township is here, okay, and waiting patiently. Um, the other thing I want to mention to everyone here and the public as well, this is not a public hearing, okay? So basically Amy and I think uh, um, the, the respondent who requested the permit is here to update the board, and that's what we're going to be doing today. We will not be taking a vote on this matter today because it isn't on the agenda for a vote, so that's where it's at right now. So we're basically getting correspondence from the questions that were asked initially. Yep, so this is just in furtherance of um, gathering the information that you asked for in order to make a decision at some point on this application. So I'll start with the docking. Last we had left it, the Department of Natural Resources had said that the it is not under their jurisdiction as a marina. So what that does is that puts that under the county's um, plan unit development docking standards. So we did go out and uh, uh, measured the docks, took a look at the amount of shoreline that they have and all of that. And the great thing is they are compliant with the number of docks that they have and with the overall square footage of docking. However, they, there is some reconfiguration of the docking that needs to occur on, a, on a two of the docks. To um, Each dock can be 700 square feet or less. They've got a couple of docks that exceed that, but um, just a reconfiguration of the docks will bring that into compliance. The other thing that we looked at is the number of mooring sites that they, um, that they are allowed. That equation is based. Can you, can you explain mooring, please? Mooring, that is how many boats they can uh, have at the docks, tied up at the docks. 
and they rent those spaces out to the to the resort um, people. So how we calculate that is we look at the square footage of land that they have in the first tier, which is the two, first 200 feet from the water, and then we calculate the, the allowed density in that area. That comes right from the ordinance. And then we take that divided by the minimum square footage of campsites, and that tells us how many allowable sites would be in that area, which is the number of mooring sites that we would allow at the docks. So that, that came up to 44, so they can have 44 mooring sites, and I believe right now they have 60. So they are over in the mooring sites, and I think I would, um, and the applicant is aware of this, and so I would uh, probably want to have you call them up to visit with them about what it is that they're planning to do with, on that front as far as to reduce the mooring sites and, and come into compliance with that. The other, the other uh, update that I will give you is that uh, there had been some questions about the septic systems that service the resort and whether or not they need Minnesota Pollution Control Agency permitting. I did uh, find out from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency that the design volume that they have does rise to the level of requiring permitting. So uh, they would need to permit with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. However, there is some legislation moving forward that may allow some relief from that. And so um, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency certainly is aware of that and, um, and would be working with the applicant. And I believe the applicant has had some conversation with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency in regards to that. We can probably provide you with an update as far as where they're at with that too. Okay. And just Amy, I think on, in, the, in the essence of time, maybe we've got to bring the township up to get, could we do that first and then we'll bring Jack and his wife up to do that to get their input if you want to come up and say who you are. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning, Board. Take a chair. Mm -hmm. Amy, nice to be here. Terry Sandstrom. <laughs> Terry Sandstrom, I'm newly elected to the Scania Valley Township Board as of January. And what I'm here today is to represent the fact that the Township Board, the last time, the last meeting, kind of left a note of the road was unsafe. Well, we did our road inspection tour last Friday and visited all the roads in the Township, of course. And we did stop at the campground and we did do a survey of the entire roads. We can't deem it unsafe in any way. So, I mean, it's a regular township road. It's got a 30 mile an hour speed limit on it. And we've also tried to uh, go over that speed limit to see if it was safe or unsafe. And that is a good posted speed limit. It's anything faster, we would have might upset our van that we were in. So with that said, the township feels the road to Scenic View is safe for the traffic that's planned on it. I mean, we have other roads in the township that higher, have higher volume, but it is in our plans to enhance that road surface down the road probably three and a half, four years. It's in the plan, but it, that's all it is at the present time. One of the things that at the township meeting like you, you've heard from your constituents, and of course, everyone wants to limit how many people they can put on the lake. No one wants more people on their lake. If we could stop all traffic from the lake, that'd be great. We can't. It is a Minnesota DNR waterway. Is that correct, Kevin? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, with that said, if Jeff, as a business owner, meets all the guidelines from Amy's standpoint and from the MPC, you know, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, we can't stop him really from enhancing it. And in some ways, we have to think of other people that can't afford to be on the lake that can go up and have a small piece of property where they can have their fire, sit around the campground, 
and enjoy the outdoor life of Minnesota. Not all of us can afford the waterways that we live on. So it gives them an alternative, and if he can offer that up, and he can find people that want to do that, more power to them, and make a living at it. That's a business going strong in Scandia Valley. From that standpoint, Scandia Valley as a whole says the roadways supportive of that at this point, as long as you meet all the other guidelines. Any questions for me? Anyone have any questions? I don't know if I'm Commissioner Wilson to you or Amy, but what about grandfathering things in? I mean, things have been there a long time with the docking and all this stuff. So how does that play into this or doesn't it? It does play into it and it doesn't all at the same time. The reason why we're looking at the docking is because they're asking for an expansion. When we when someone's asking for an expansion, that's when we're applying today's standards to the resort. That's why we're looking at the docking, that's why we're looking at the density, that's why we're looking at the impervious surface, all of that. So when you ask for expansion, that's when we apply the provisions of our ordinance. If if we did not have a request for an expansion, we would not be addressing the docking. We would not be addressing any of those other issues. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner. Amy, if you could expand maybe just a little tiny bit. We don't have a building inspector in Morrison County. No. So because of the fact that we don't have a building inspector in Morrison County, and, and sometimes it gets a little unclear as to how this works, is really the only time that your agency goes anywhere, if you will, is upon somebody building something, upon somebody remodeling, maybe remodeling something, maybe, and certainly an expansion such as this, where, where the can of worms, so to speak, is open. And once the can of worms is open, or there's a complaint opening that can of worms, it's at that point in time that you now everything's open, that you get, get a chance to view everything. It, is that really yes. kind of how it all works? That is correct. So when when we are asked for something, yeah. so for to construct a building, it, and, and in this case, under a conditional use permit, which, which requires yeah. some kind of elevated permitting, that's when we are looking at um, the operation as a whole. Okay. And that's how the ordinance works? Yes. How the, okay. and, it, and it operates that way in the feedlot world as well. Okay. Very good. Thank Commissioner you. Johnson? Yes. One question for Amy. Um, so if, if Mr. and Mrs. Harvey wouldn't have came for a permit, this uh, DNR thing wouldn't have been brought up. Correct. We there, would not there, be there, and there wouldn't have been. Mr. Yes, Commissioner. It's Wilson. really not brought up if they don't do the expansion, right? right. I mean, the docks right. stay the yeah. same yep. if you right. were not expanded. Correct. Right. Other questions of the board? Very good. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Thanks, you. Yep. Very yep. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day. Yep. I guess Jeff and his wife. I forget your first name. Julie. Julie. Jeff and Julie. Come on up. Morning. Yes. Morning. Morning, Jeff. Morning, Morning Julie. <laughs> yes, Jeff. So um, I, I think Terry addressed kind of the road. Um, I did speak with Steve Bukowski yesterday about the road, and just kind of he reiterated the fact that there's not been any accidents on this road. Um, uh, township actually uh, drove down the road and, and Tuesday during the meeting we were there uh, they did actually take a vote in favor um, I don't have it in their minutes I talked to the clerk and, and tried to get her to include that in the minutes but um, if, I, if I'm speaking correctly Terry I, I do believe they voted in favor of it in favor of of the resort expansion I, I believe they voted in favor of the resort expansion under conditions like Terry said that you yeah. comply with all the correct, others. correct. Okay. Okay, so let's let's do this, and and, and um, you know we we basically have three three issues: it's the road, it's the environment, and it's the marina. So um, you know, addressing the road, I think we've done that. The marina, 
Um, you know, if we're asked to reduce our sites, we actually had 62 sites that we rented out. We would have to reduce that by 18, um, you know, and I've been in contact with the DNR several times related to our marina status and, um, you know, even if it was considered a marina, they still have to fall in line with uh, local ordinances. So um, for me, it really isn't advantageous to be either one. So, um, so if we're being asked to comply with um, uh, the local ordinances, um, we are willing to do that. So, and then, you know, speaking to the environment. Can I interrupt for just a second? Yes, sir. So I just want to clarify, so on the docking, what the plan is is to reconfigure the docks so each one of them is 700 square feet or less? Correct. And then we're reducing the mooring sites down to 44? Is that Correct. what you're planning, is that your plan? That is okay. our plan. And so uh, we should probably move, um, you know, the square footage and the number of docks that we are allowed, um, you know, so in essence we're not really being asked to remove any docks. Um, the enforcement, um, if those docks remain in the water, um, I don't know who that would fall on. If somebody were to tie up a dock, even though we're allowed to have them there, um, who would be responsible for enforcing that or not? What are you asking? So, like if I had, um, you know, I meet the square footage and the number of docks that are allowed in the water, and then, um, so